Hello everyone and welcome back to a very special presentation of One Man Stream. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go through our American football graphic start to finish. We're going to show you how we create that graphic in GT Title Designer, how we do the automation like the touchdown that you see right there. We'll also show you how we change the score with the zoom fade and we'll also show you how we use list widgets to do down and distance and quarter. And we'll show you how we hide and show uh, the timeouts as well. Then we're going to head over to VMix UTC and we're going to show you the layout and how we do the scoring. And then we're going to show you the magic behind every one of the buttons. Lastly, uh, we're going to take you behind the scenes of each and every one of the buttons and show you how we do the automation. A lot of it is using the set X visible on and set X visible off uh, functions that are available in VMix UTC. But we'll take you step by step. We'll show you exactly how you do it. We have all that and much more coming for you today on One Man Stream. This is what the graphic looks like in GT Title Designer, and it's actually a fairly easy graphic to create. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I like to do is I like to turn off uh, the layers that we're not currently working on. And that leaves us with the very top line that says Pegasus and Sports. Uh, we actually have that uh, bound inside this uh, rectangle right here. Click on the rectangle and we're going to bring it here. And we know that it's 1198 by 71. And I'll show you how we know that in just a moment. 1198. by 71. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up under effects and we're going to skew it and uh, let's go back to the top rectangle and see what we skewed it originally. So we're going to click on top, top rectangle and it's lo it looks like we had it skewed by about seven. So let's back this down a little bit. And now we have that match. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to home and we're going to click on fill color and we are going to make it a, a shade of white. Okay. So now we have us a rectangle. We have it skewed. We have white for the fill color and we have a black border. What we're going to do is we're going to lighten up inside of the rectangle. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go to fill color. And then here where it says alpha, we're going to bring it down. Let's bring it down to about right there. So in order to get the Pegasus and the sports, I'll tell you what, let's bring this down a little bit further. So to get the Pegasus and the sports, we actually brought these in as images. So this was a long time ago. So it's way down Here's one of them, this right here, Pegasus. So we'll click on that and click OK. And it's going to bring in the sports. And now what we do is we grab these co this corner here and we just manipulate it until we make it the size that's going to work for us. So let's go ahead and bring it, make it a little bit bigger. And right back, right about there is going to do it. That's the sports part of Pegasus Sports. So let's go back up here. So this is the rectangle that we created. This is sports and now we got to, now we need to bring in Pegasus. So we're going to click on the image one more time. We're going to go back to where we were about and that's going to bring in Pegasus. So let's go ahead and grab a corner and make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and to do fine adjustments, what I do is I like to click on the menu bar and then I'll use the arrows on my keyboard and then that will let me place it just where I want it. So that's how we got the, the top portion of uh, the graphic created. So now we're going to go to the home team and visiting team. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's turn on, turn on layer three and layer two. And then we're also going to have to turn on the timeouts for layer one. I mean, for yeah, for layer two and layer three. 
Now we have one more thing that we need to turn on and that's going to be team record because that's also uh, on this particular portion of the graphic. So team record two and team record one. Okay, so let's go ahead and make these two boxes right here. So again, we're gonna click on the rectangle. We're gonna drag us out a box that we think is about right. Okay, we're gonna click on team two background and then we're gonna go under format and we can see that these two particular blocks are 584 by, 19, uh, 584 by 149. 584 by 149. All right. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to skew it again. So we're going to go to effects. And then we're going to do the same seven that we did on uh, the, the top rectangle there. And then we're going to come through and we're going to go to home. We're going to click on fill color. We're going to make that fill color a grayish color. Well, we got to make it a little bit darker than that, I think. There we go. And then let's click on it again and let's bring that opacity down like we did on the other one. And we'll leave it about right there. And we do want to give it a border as well. So we're going to click on that, click on black, and we'll give it the same three that we did on the previous one and then that's very similar so what we're going to do now is we're going to click on this rectangle two we're going to copy and we're going to paste and when we do that you can see that rectangle two changed to rectangle three so now i'm going to click on the menu bar and i'm going to use my arrow key and this is just a quick way of duplicating elements where you don't have to start from scratch And we're going to let it rest about right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the rectangle. We're going to go up to color. Let's click on more colors. And let's just choose this green right here and click OK. And then what we're going to do, I know that doesn't match, but then what we're going to do is what we did to the previous one. We're going to click on color again, and we're going to start to edge the opacity down a little bit. And we're going to go with that right there. So now we have the two rectangles for visiting team and home team so now let's go ahead and get the images in here for these so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the image button and we're going to go with a couple different images just because these are up close and at the front so we're going to click on this one and we're going to click open then we're going to slide it down here make it a little bit smaller and we're going to position it right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique called masking. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is the first time that we've dealt with masking. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to put it over the area that I want to show. And I'm going to go ahead and skew it as well. So we're going to go to effects and we're going to hit that same seven. And I want to make it a little bit smaller at the top because I want that border to show. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the opacity here. I'm going to take the opacity down to about two. All right. And then we're going to title this visiting mask. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the image. Then I'm going to go up here under mask. And then I'm going to click on visitor mask. And as you can see, now only the part that was inside of that mask that we created is being showed and shown in the graphic. So the next thing we need to do is we need to bring in this record right here. Well, this record is very simple. It's just a text box. So we'll click the ABC, drag us out a little box here. We're going to go to home. We're going to center it in the middle left to right in the middle up and down. I know that the font that we're using is impact. So I'm going to click on impact. Then I'm going to click on bold or extra bold. And let's go ahead and change the fill color to white. And then something I like to do is I like to click on right here where it says configure automatic text box, re text box resizing. I'm going to click the down arrow and I'm going to click shrink. And that way anything inside this box is going to stay inside this box. So that's how we did the team record there. 
So I'm going to click on the image three. I'm going to right click and copy and right click and paste. And you can see that image three changed to image four. So now I'm going to click on the title bar, use the arrow key once more. And you can see what's happening here as it goes outside that mask. It's becoming hidden because only what was in that mask is what's shown. But I'll show you what happens when we get this over to the other side. And we're going to stop it about right here. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to click on this. It says visiting mask. We're going to right click, copy, right click and paste. And now it says visiting mask one. It adds a digit uh, to what we copy and pasted. So let's change this now to home mask. And for the sake of saving time, we're going to go ahead and bring it over here. And we're going to leave it about right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to image four. Now we're going to go to effects and instead of having it masked to the visiting mask, we're going to mask it to the home mask and voila, there comes our image again. But let's go ahead and change this image. So we're going to right click and click browse and uh, let's go to a different image. Let's go to this one right here and click open. And then we're going to click on, actually, let's make it a little bit bigger. Then we're going to click on the title bar, use our keys, our arrow keys like we've done before, and position it right there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we need to have a record spot for the home team. So we're going to click on this text block two, copy, right click, paste, changes the text block, text block three. And we're going to go ahead and drag this over here. And we're going to click on the text block three menu bar. And now we're going to use the arrow keys for fine adjustment. And that looks pretty good right there. So the only we only have a couple more things to do and we need to bring in the score for the visiting team. So we're going to click on, let's just do this. We're going to click on text. We're going to bring this over here. Let's go ahead and click home, center it in the middle up and down, in the middle left to right. We're gonna pick that impact font. We are gonna change it to extra bold. And then we're also gonna use that shrink function again. We're gonna change it to white. And I'm gonna double click on this and I'm gonna type in 99. And so that it has the same slant, let's go to format. No, I'm sorry, let's go to effects. And then let's go ahead and give it that slant of seven. There we go. Now it's slanted. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Go to home. There we go. And we're going to leave that right there at 99. And then text block four, we're going to change that to visitor score. So we're going to click on visitor score. We're going to right click, copy, right click, paste, use our arrow keys. And we're going to bring this over here. And now we're going to call this home score text blocks three. Well, the problem that I run into when I do these demos is I can't give something the same name twice. So this one actually text block three would be home record. This is the home mask image four would be home team logo text blocks two. text block two would be visiting team record visiting mask image three would be visiting team mascot rectangle three would be home team background. Rectangle two would be visiting team background. This image two would be Pegasus and image one would be sports. So if I was doing all the naming as I was going along, that is what these would be named. So uh, we need to bring in the timeouts now. So I'm going to bring those in as an ABC and I'm going to do these just a little bit different. So we're going to delete all the text out of there. So what I ended up doing is I just used the bar 
which is actually uh, above the backslash. So I, I click shift and then I click the backslash key and it brought these bars in. So let's go to effects. We'll go ahead and give it that uh, slant of seven like everything else has had. And then there are the timeout. So I'm gonna click on this, right click and copy, right click and paste. I'm gonna click on the menu bar that says text block five and then walk those over. Okay, the last few items we have are quarter, clock, down and distance, and then the background rectangle. And then there's a couple things that we have uh, that we actually uh, turn, on, turn on and off with some automation. That's this right here, which says touchdown. Uh, touchdown is actually uh, created just using the ABC text block right there. And then I did that and then I skewed it to uh, match the skew that was in the Pegasus and sports. So let's turn touchdown off. The other thing we have is flag text, which comes in right there. Click on the menu bar and I can move it over just so that you can see it. And then flag comes on when there's a flag on the plate. But what I do is I actually have it over top of this, uh, which is the uh, time clock. And then with the automation that I do, I bring the flag in. And when I bring the flag designation in, I uh, take the, the uh, clock off, leave the flag there for seven or eight seconds, take that away and then bring the clock back. So the only thing left that we have to do is this line right here. Down in distance background, we're gonna go to format it's 1198 by 71. It's the exact same thing as this top part that we made. So we're going to click rectangle. Come over here. 1198 by 71. Let's go ahead and give it the under effects. Let's go ahead and give it the skew. And then we need to change the fill color to black. And then we also have a border that's black. And we'll do the same three on that. And that gives us our background. Now the second, the 12 o'clock, and the third and eight, those are all ABC text blocks. So I'm gonna come over here, make a text block. I'm going to center it in the middle up and down, center it in the middle left and right. We're gonna click on the shrink button. I'm gonna go to impact, make it extra bold. We're gonna change the fill color to white, and then we're gonna go ahead under effects, and we're gonna go ahead and give it that skew. Then we're just gonna click in there, and we're gonna type in second. Text block six, let's just go ahead and call this quarter. So I'm gonna right click and copy, right click and paste, use my arrow keys. Then I'm just gonna click in here, and I'm gonna type in 12. And we're gonna come over here where it says quarter one from where I duplicated it. And we're just gonna call this game clock. We're gonna click on game clock. We're gonna right click and copy and right click and paste. We're gonna bring it over here. Click on game clock one, which is what it changed to. Use the arrow key. And we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna click on here and type in third and eight. And then we're gonna change game clock one to D, D, oops, I'm sorry, D, D for down and distance. The first button we're going to look at is uh, the visitor score button. Well, we're going to click on the plus six, and it's going to add six points to the visitor score. And then we click on one, and you can see it fade in one number higher, changes from number six to number seven. Same thing for the home score. We click on it. It's going to fade in six, and we're going to add a, one more point for the uh, point after and it increases their score by one to seven. All right, and now we're gonna look at down and distance, and this is just really utilization 
of the uh, list widget. And we have most of the possible down and distances uh, listed right there. It's also a list widget that we use for quarter uh, as well. We also have a text field there for some of the down and distances that aren't as common, like long down and distances like uh, second and 15, and that will change it on the fly. We're going to click the visitor touchdown button, and you'll see that the Pegasus and Sports goes away, and that touchdown comes in. And then it brings the Pegasus Sports back, and then it automatically adds six to the visitor score. Now we're going to click the home touchdown button. Let's see what it does. It takes out the Pegasus and Sports there in that top bar, brings in touchdown, then it brings Pegasus and Sports back, and then it adds seven. And with the uh, possession buttons there, all it's really doing is hiding and revealing that little yellow uh, football image. So first off, let me uh, direct your attention to this upper corner here. And when I do this, I'm going to bring in our scoreboard overlay. And you'll see right here uh, the, the game clock. Uh, this is how we start and stop the game clock. So if we hit the start button right here, you can actually see over here uh, that the clock starts. And we can hit this button here to pause it. Um, I do have some commands uh, put into this, start and pause. Um, keeping the, the clock, if anybody has ever done high school football or any type of, of a high school sport, uh, it's actually a person, it's actually a job for just one person. It takes that much time uh, to keep the clock. Unless you have something like SportsCast, which actually allows you to bring the real-time information in from the control console there uh, at the venue. But what I've done here is I've just created two keys. One is start and one is pause. And those are operated by the F5 key and the F6 key on my keyboard. And that's how I can start and stop. Uh, without having to come uh, to these uh, small buttons right here to start and stop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F5. And you can see right here where the clock starts. I'm going to hit F6. And you can see right here uh, where it pauses. And then F5 again. And it starts back up. I'm going to go ahead and bring the uh, intro in now. And I'm going to click on the intro button. And you can see this is our graphic that we use to kind of set the stage for the game when we're opening the production. We'll bring that in. And uh, you can see some information here where it says South Odom uh, High School. And if you look over here, this is where that information is going. And uh, I'll just go ahead and get rid of a couple of the letters so that you can see that that is what is populating that information. This information down here where it says Dragon Field, that comes in from right here. And then um, where it has the team names and the mascot name and then the record, uh, that actually comes from right here. So if you look at that graphic, uh, Fern Creek is the team on top. Let's go ahead and click and uh, click this uh, from the drop down list, uh, Team 1. And you can see that Fern Creek changes to Team 1. So we'll go ahead and change them back. Then over here for the home team, the South Odom Dragons, if I hit the drop down menu and choose team two, it'll change that to team two. And we're, we're just gonna go ahead and, uh, and set them back to South Odom. The dragon information, this is actually a, it is actually a list widget, but if you go inside, um, after you choose from the drop down menu, if you go inside and click on it, you can actually change the information uh, that's in there. You can see as I backspace, it gets rid of the uh, Chargers rec. Oh, and we're going to go ahead and put 0 and 4 back in there and get it back to where it was to begin with. And then this field over here does the same thing for the home team. It brings in their mascot name along with their record. This next section down here is the logos. You can see all the logos that I have uh, collected over the years. I have logos for most of all the local high school teams here in the area. And then this top part is all the different inputs within this uh, vMix production, this vMix football production uh, that I have it mapped to. So anytime I change it in one place, it changes in all the uh, inputs that I have uh, mapped it to right here. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And then right here, let me bring the scoreboard back in again. This right here is the uh, timeouts for the visiting team and for the home team. If you look right here, these yellow bars 
Uh, these indicate the timeout. So if I go up to the visiting team and I backspace and get rid of one of the bars, you can see the timeout goes away. I hit it again and timeout goes away. Uh, or I hit it one more time and one more timeout goes away. This next section right here is when a visitor score a touchdown or the home team scores a touchdown. So I'll just go ahead and uh, click on that. And uh, up where it said Pegasus Sports, that goes away and brings in the word touchdown. That stays in for a while. And then that goes away and it brings the Pegasus Sports logo back in. And then I have some automation with this button and then it brings in the score, adds to the score. So we'll do th the same thing for the home team. It says touchdown. It takes the Pegasus Sports um, away. It brings in the word touchdown. Then it brings Pegasus Sports in and then it adds six. And uh, that way that fades in and out is through a data change uh, function that you can use in uh, GT Title Designer. And I showed you how to do that with the uh, score widget uh, tutorial. Over here we have down and distance and I'll just go to the drop. Well, let's go up here. I, I jumped ahead. Over here we have the quarter just from the drop down menu. We can change the quarter, second quarter, change it to halftime, and then we can change it to final. And that's all done through this uh, list widget here in the drop down menu. Uh, the next is down and distance. I have most all the uh, common down and distances already preloaded, but I also have for when you have odd uh, yardages, like I'll go ahead and click on this one. You can see it comes up first and, and then I'll use this other section over here and I can put whatever I need to in there first and 25. So you can see it makes it a little bit easier. Go to another one. Now we have second down. Team's not doing very well at all. Now we have second and 35. And that makes it a lot easier. This next one is when there's a flag on the play. I'll go ahead and click that. And you can see where flag comes up. Um, it's overlaying the score right now. Generally when I do uh, my productions I don't use the score component of the scoreboard that I've done what I'll do is I'll put a camera on the scoreboard and I'll bring it in and I'll put the uh, image of the scoreboard in right here so let's go on show some of the uh, some of the other graphics this was the intro graphic we saw that this is one of our break graphics we use here's another one of our break graphics And then we have some uh, overlays that we use. This is the uh, uh, score bug for Pegasus. This is one of the productions that we do, and I'll bring that in. And you can see that comes in in the upper right-hand corner. We'll get rid of that. Their pregame show is sponsored by Baptist Health, so I have a graphic for that. Halftime sponsor is Champion Chevrolet, so we'll get rid of that. And then we have another uh, break graphic that I've been working on. And this section right here is the uh, music that we use uh, during the broadcast. Uh, this is the opening music. And this is the music that we use to uh, take us in and out of the break. And this is just uh, another bit of music that we use uh, during the production. If you want to learn how to do the commands uh, for the fade, uh, I would suggest watching our tutorial on uh, the volume widget. Uh, we go over the step-by-step -step and the logic behind the commands that you need to use in order to do this fade function. I have a whole lot of automation in this right here. Uh, this is our go to break button that we use. And I just want to draw your attention. Uh, when I hit that button, not only does it bring the music in to take us into the break, it removes the scoreboard and then it brings in our uh, break graphic. And I'll click it one more time so you can see all that. And then the next button underneath of it, it brings us uh, back to uh, live action from the break and you can see that it takes out the intro
we have a visitor bio and a home team bio. And this is actually uh, what we had set up for a, an indoor football league uh, that we were doing production for for a while, the uh, Louisville Extreme. And this, is, uh, this information is populated right here. Um, if I click on another one, you can see that it changes and brings in uh, the information. Uh, this player, Jeff Branch, number 25, he was from Presentation College 63250, a defensive lineman. Uh, this next part here is live stats and it immediately sends the uh, stats to preview. You can see right here in the preview. If we hit the button next to it, uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna send it to program. So that way we can make sure we have the uh, correct information uh, before we go live. So let's go ahead and put some information in here and we'll just add some information in quickly. And just on the fly, I put in there that the, the uh, player was uh, five for six with three TDs. Uh, if it was a, if you want to put a graphic up for a running back, it's it's just as simple. And just like that, ten rushes for 120 yards, two TDs. So that's just something that uh, allows you to put information in uh, on the fly. Right. Uh, the next part here, I really kind of, I really like this because the producer that we are the uh, client that we use, he actually provides us with slides to use during the game. And so I just put all of them here in a drop down menu. And then when I hit uh, uh, the name of the production is, is Pegasus Sports that we're doing this for. So when I click this, uh, you can see that it brings in this slide. All the slides are listed in this drop down menu here. So as I go through, you can see that the slides are changing. Keys to the game. I really like working with this. Uh, gentleman because he provides me with all this information and makes it very simple and what I do is uh, I do this production for the uh, uh, for Pegasus Sports remotely and I just listen for keys from the uh, the play-by-play -play announcer and the color commentator and then I just go with these slides uh, on the predetermined cues this section right here uh, will clear certain overlay fields let's go ahead this one here is on overlay channel 3 so if I click this it's going to get rid of it. Uh, the Pegasus bug, that's probably going to be overlay channel two. So I click overlay channel two, it gets rid of the bug. So that's just a, a very convenient way of getting rid of, of certain overlay channels. Uh, this right, right here are the audio faders. That's how we can manually fade uh, the music in and out if we want to do that. Right over here is the uh, master volume and then volume for bus A. What we'll do is I put the play-by-play -play analyst and the color commentator, I put them on bus A. And that way, uh, when I go to break and um, their uh, mics get muted, this green button right here will actually turn red and I'll know that their mics are no longer hot. Over here, this is a lower third that we use for uh, acknowledging the announcers during the game. So let's go ahead and click that. And all these graphics uh, I made in GT Title Designer, and I also have automation, so it's going to stay on for a certain amount of time, and then it's going to go away. A lot of times, this is a one-man production, so uh, you can forget to leave overlays on. So that's one of the reasons why I use the timer function quite a bit, because it's going to bring it on for a set amount of time, and then it's going to go ahead and uh, take that graphic away. One thing that you'll notice anytime I click one of the buttons that has automation in it, you'll see that they'll, uh, the outline, there'll be a green outline and that green outline stays on until all the automation uh, has ceased. Also, you, what you'll notice, um, and we'll talk about this in our, uh, when we follow up with the explanation, this is just the overview, but you, you'll notice that when I click the lower third, it takes the scoreboard out it brings in the lower third and then after a certain amount of time it takes the lower third out and then it brings that scoreboard back in if we go through the layout today there's a few things that i want to direct your attention to right off each one of these i want you to look up here in the top left of each one of these buttons to see what type of widget is widget it is uh, whether it's a timer widget a button widget a list widget um, and this is going to give you an idea of where you need to start when you're trying to build this for yourself at home so the first button we're going to look at is the game clock button. And that is a, uh, the, it comes to us through the timer widget. In the menu bar right here, if you click underneath widget, it's going to show you all the possible or all the usable widgets uh, within this program. And that's what I'm talking about when we click on these 
I want to draw your attention to what particular widget it is that we're using. So this one right here on this first one under game clock, this is the timer widget. And you'll see that we have a couple of these tick boxes uh, ticked for start and pause. And then over here in the link, we have uh, some commands put in there, start clock and pause clock. And then you'll also see we have some hotkeys that we put in there so that we can uh, start and stop the clock with ha without having to uh, go and use these small buttons up here. So we'll use F5 to start the clock and F6 to stop the clock. Underneath that, we have the venue name and the venue name is a text field widget. And you can under style, there are always a text or file and we're just gonna use it as a text widget. And then these are the inputs that we have it mapped to. The next field is the venue location and that too is gonna be a text field widget. And you'll see under style, it also says text. Underneath that, we have the quarter down and distance. And this uh, drop down menu is going to be a clue as to what type of widget this is. It's going to be a list widget. These are all the items within this list widget first, second, third, fourth, overtime, half, and final. And you can put those in um, manually by just clicking this plus button here and uh, typing in uh, whatever you wanted to type in. We're going to just type in after show here. If you look over to the left hand corner where it says first, uh, I'll go to this drop down menu here under quarter. I'll change it to after show and you'll see where that just changed to after show. So that's how quickly you can add something to it. Um, or you can also bring in, if I hold on these two buttons here, this one says save list and this one says load list. If you click on this, you can bring in a list that you made in Notepad or another program, and it'll bring in all these items at one time so you don't have to do them individually. Uh, the next button we're gonna look at is the down and distance button. And again, this is going to be a list widget. And you can see all the down and distances that we have. And you can also um, add on the fly, as I said on the previous one, all you gotta do is click the plus button and you can see that at the very end or the very bottom of this list, it's, it adds one more line for us. Okay, and you'll see as we uh, click this button here, flag on the play, it's going to bring up the flag in yellow on the bottom part of that scoreboard in the middle. It takes away the clock and then it's going to bring in a timer function for a set amount of time and then it's going to bring the clock back in. So let's take a look at that. So the command that we use to turn the different items on the scoreboard off and on are set X visible off or set X visible on. So the first thing we're doing is uh, index six is the clock. So we're turning the clock off and then we're uh, setting visible on index two, which is the flag. So then we're br bringing the flag in then we have a timer that's going to stay on for 10 seconds, which is uh, 10,000 milliseconds. And then we're going to set visible off on the flag, which is index two. And then we're going to set visible back on for six and six is the clock. Now, one thing I do want to remind you of, and we talked about this when we were uh, actually doing um, one of the previous tutorials where we were uh, putting components of the scoreboard on and off. You have to choose the type and the type is either text or image and you have to make sure you have it set for what you're trying to do. If you're trying to turn text off and on, make sure you have it set to text. If you're trying to turn images off and on, make sure you have it set to images. Next thing we're going to go to is the uh, scoreboard uh, on the visitor side. And this is how we add or uh, take away score from the uh, visitor score. And we have this uh, ticked here for plus six. And this is what we're using with automation on a, another button that I'm going to show you later. And that link uh, or the command that we're going to use is add six uh, V, which is add six points to visitors. And we're going to use that um, when we are uh, on these buttons right here, the visitor touchdown and the home touchdown. I'll show you that. And 
you'll notice the very last command here is execute link at 6v and what this does is after it runs a host of other commands it's going to add six points to the visitor score and it does that with the data change fade function uh, that we incorporated with that graphic with gt title designer this next part is going to be a drop down list and it has the, uh, just a couple names in here that I use for an example. And then again, if you want to click the plus sign, uh, you can add names on the fly. So we'll go on to mascot. And this is going to be a, a text, text widget as well. I'm sorry, a list widget. Uh, and as I showed you in the previous uh, episode, if you click in this field here, it allows you to go in and uh, change things on the fly. Next thing down is the uh, visitor's logo. And I have all these logos in here. Now, when you're bringing these in and you can add a logo just like this, then you would go to wherever you have your logos. All right, so we're just gonna use this one as example here on Bullet East. We're gonna click on it and then we're gonna go up here to copy path. It's automatically gonna copy the path. We're gonna bring it in here. We're gonna right click and paste. And you'll notice when it comes in, it comes in with these quotation marks. It will not display correctly with these quotation marks. So you have to take this one off here and you'll have to take this one off here. Then we'll bring the logo back in and you can see uh, where it changed the Fern Creek Tiger to this Bullet East logo here. So let's go ahead and change that back. And we have it back to where we started from. Uh, this next button right here this is how we keep track of the timeouts and it's basically just a text filled widget and so we actually keep track of the timeouts by these little bars that we have in here so if we want to take a timeout if we want to take a timeout away from the visiting team we'll just backspace once and you'll notice that a timeout has been removed so we'll go ahead and add that back this right here is a visitor touchdown, and this is what we were talking about with the automation. It brings the touchdown in, takes away Pegasus Sports, leaves that on for a set amount of time, then it brings the Pegasus Sports back in, and then it does the data change effect with the fade effect to bring in uh, six points. So let's take a look at that. And again, we're just uh, turning components of the scoreboard on and off using the set X visible on command and the set X, set X visible off command. Index three is the is Pegasus because it was an image at the top there. So it's Pegasus. And then image uh, index two is gonna be sports. So you'll see these first two items are going off. This is going off, that's Pegasus and sports. And then it's, uh, this one is setting X visible on, which is text and that is touchdown. So it brings in that touchdown in yellow. It leaves it on for eight seconds. And then it sets the visible off for index one, which was touchdown. And then it brings in Pegasus and sports again. And then the very last, and then it waits for one second and then the very last thing it does is it brings in and adds six to the visitor score. Uh, these are very simple under these graphics. This uh, has our scoreboard in. If I click it once, it comes in. If I click it in, it goes off. And you can see that it's state dependent right here. When I click on it, it uh, sh shows up in red, letting me know that it is live in my production. So let's look at that button. And it's very simple, overlay input X, where X is our football scoreboard. And then we have that coming in on overlay three. And you can see right here where I have it clicked to state dependent. That's what allows us uh, to bring it, or, or that's what allows that red light to come on. The overlay input X, as we've talked about before, it works as like a toggle function. So we press it once, it brings it in, we press it again, and it takes it back out. Next one is our intro. And that is just overlay input X, uh, just like the previous one. So let's see what that looks like. And we'll take it back out again. This next one is one of our break ones. And this is overlay input X. And this is going to bring in our football break. And we bring that in on overlay field four. 
So let's see what that looks like. And there's a little animation there that we added uh, in vMix title, in GT title designer. So we'll take that out. This Pegasus bug is for our sponsor. Let's click that. And take that back out. Here's their pre-game uh, pre sponsor is Baptist Health. And you'll see where that comes in. And then the halftime sponsor is Champions Chevrolet. You see where that comes in. And those commands are just overlay input X, bringing in overlay channel one. We're gonna bring in another break that we have. And same thing, overlay input X, and that's on overlay channel four. And then let's get rid of that. Okay, these uh, buttons right here, just uh, clear the overlays. And I'll just show you one of them because you don't need to see all of them because they basically do the same thing. This one right, ha right here says overlay input X out. So we're clearing the entire overlay channel and the overlay channel is denoted as four. And that is what this button says, clear overlay channel four. So this one would be the same command with overlay channel three, overlay channel two and overlay channel one. Okay, and on this clearing all the overlays, we're using the same command, but we're doing it one channel at a time, overlay input X out. This is for overlay channel four, overlay channel three, overlay channel two, and overlay channel one. So that clears all of our overlay channels with just one button. Uh, this next is the audio information. And uh, I hesitate to use these uh, actual audio clips because every time I do, I get a strike with uh, YouTube and I have to go back and take the audio out. But this is what it would look like, so I'm not gonna play them out. I have the automation here for a, another button for when we go in and out of break. The execute uh, and reset is ticked. Uh, for it uh, to run the command, it's play opening. And to reset the command, it's reset opening. Okay, so the two, two things that we're doing with this button is we're telling it what clip we want it to play. So this is the clip right here, it's the input. And then we wanna set the volume on it. So we're setting the volume, we're gonna set it at 90% to start the clip off. Which might be a little bit loud, but we'll probably have to go back and tweak that. And it's the same thing for all these buttons. Uh, this is our go to break button. And we have quite a bit of automation with this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mute the play-by-play uh, -play and color commentator mics. Then we're gonna clear all the overlay channels. We're gonna set the volume to 70. We're gonna start to play it. And then we're gonna run a timer because what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna fade it. And you need to watch our video on uh, the volume widget on how to set up the sequence for these fade controls for it to work properly for you. Um, I'm not gonna go into that now, but please watch that video and it'll, it'll explain to you why we have these uh, commands in this sequence. So here's a timer command for four seconds, uh, then set volume fade. We're gonna fade the volume all the way down to zero over 7,000 uh, milliseconds or seven seconds. Then we're gonna execute where we're gonna show the break graphic. And then we're gonna have another timer for 12 seconds and then we are going to reset the input, uh, which is the brake bump in this case, so that the next time we come to it, it's at the beginning uh, of that clip. For our back from break, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the volume of the brake to uh, 80. We're gonna show our brake graphic. We're gonna play the brake uh, bump. We're gonna leave a tim timer on for four seconds, and then we're gonna fade it over seven seconds all the way down to zero. Then we're gonna uh, execute the link, which is gonna unmute the play-by-play uh, -play and color commentators. Then we're going to run another timer, and then we are going to reset uh, the input, which is the break bump music. These audio faders, it's actually the volume widget. And with the uh, volume widget, you have a couple choices. Uh, you can either make it an input you can make it master or you can make it any one of the buses that you have uh, activated in your vMix production. In this case, I have it as an input. You have to tell it what input it is. And on this one, it's uh, this uh, God for a day uh, MP3. You can set your sliders to be either vertical or horizontal. 
and then you can choose whether you show the meter or show the slider and on these I'm showing both uh, I'm, I'm only showing the slider I'm not showing the meter on these guys down here you can see the slider and the meter so let's get back over here player bio from data sources and this is actually a list widget and these are all the different components of the title that I have it mapped to you'll notice I brought that same input in a number of times I'm using this as um, a list widget uh, instead of using a data source and transporting it in in this particular use case I'm using bar delimited data so let's go through this the very first one is going to be player name that's the first bit of information on this line then player number that is what comes next after the bar next would be the position wide receiver next would be the height which it is six foot four then we have weight and that is indeed what we have next followed by college right here oops I'm sorry right here players hometown after the bar Indian River Michigan player image I didn't have images set up on these so I just put a couple dash marks in there just to hold the place and then the last thing is the team logo okay this allows us to choose uh, what player we want so let's go ahead and, and click this guy right here and when we click this uh, visitor bio to program it'll bring it in so you'll notice that when I did this it actually took away overlay layer 3 which was the score bug and then it brings in uh, it brings in this graphic right here now down here is another graphic this is player stats and we can bring it into preview by clicking it right here and you can see in this window right here which is our preview window it brings it in and then this one right here will actually send it to program this is where we put the stats in right here so this is uh, the visitor stat line so we'll just go ahead and put in player of the game and you can see it right here you can see that it is not showing in our production right yet so what we do is we click on this next button to it and this is player game stats to program so let's go ahead and click on it again it takes out the scoreboard and it brings in the stat where it says player of the game that we just uh, loaded in real time this last thing you'll see it says Pegasus elements and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that and it is a list widget the client actually supplies us with a, a bunch of graphic overlays so what I do is I just bring those in as images and make sure that you are taking the uh, quotation marks at the beginning uh, at the beginning and the end and this is the, com uh, the command that's actually going to display them overlay input X out we're going to go ahead and clear out uh, overlay 4 in case there's anything on overlay 4 channel we're going to clear out overlay 3 we're going to clear out overlay 2 we're going to clear out overlay 1 and then we're going to cut direct to this particular series of elements so let's see what that looks like all right and then we can actually really quickly change these so let's go to the opening graphic let's go to the keys of the game let's go to upcoming schedule and then to give some props at the end of the game we have uh, the play-by-play -play, color and the camera operator thank you for spending time with us today i always appreciate it please make sure you give us a thumbs up and a like and make sure you subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted and as always thank you so much for spending time with us here at one man stream